Hey everyone, it's JC, the Gospel Centered Health Coach. I haven't said that in a while. <laughs> I've been trying to decide if I'm going to keep it. Tell me what you think. I don't know. Um, anyway, that is what I am. I am back with some huge feelings that have been on my mind for the past few days. I have been deep down the rabbit hole with a new book and it has um, spiraled me in a, in a direction I want to talk about and want to share with you. Um, mainly on <laughs> the same thing I tend to always talk about, right? <laughs> Why the Lord plays such a role in our health. But we're going to talk about a little bit. Actually, what I'm just going to do is quote to you some of this book, and then we'll go off about it for a second. It's called Gut Feelings. Gut Feelings by Dr. Will Cole. I can't hold it up for you because I bought the Kindle version because I was too impatient to wait. I've followed him for a while. He's a functional medicine um, doctor, really has a cool perspective on health and healing. I'll put his website below and the link to the book. But he's been talking about the main idea in this book is that so often when we are trying to change our health, we go after the physical changes, right? The lifestyle changes, which are so important. And he talks about that. But we just don't remember to include in Western society, like, like has been done in the past in other cultures, the mental, the emotional are all intertwined in our health journey. And you can't separate that. They play a role. In fact, listen to this. This is uh, how I want to start off the quote that was my favorite. He said, a person's mental emotional and spiritual world is not just part of the overall holistic picture. It's the critical piece. It's the critical piece. We've talked a lot about the, I, I, I talk about Christ-centered wellness being four things, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. But I've, I haven't really heard a doctor say that. And to have him come out and say, listen, the emotional the mental, all of that, all that's going on in our sweet little heads isn't just part of the overall picture. It's the critical piece to look at in our journey to feel better, to get our health back, to break our addiction, break our emotional eating, whatever it is. We so often tackle the physical. We start a new diet. We get a new plan. We start, you know, this many macros or calories or this much, much exercise, which is all good. But we're missing the critical piece. Let me read... Um, this is what he says about his functional medicine clinic and his experience treating, he's trying to treat people holistically, all of the pieces in one part. And listen to what he says. He says, I've seen patients with chronic digestive issues cut virtually every trigger food out of their diet, but see their digestive health continue to decline because of chronic stress. I've seen patients try every exercise and diet that exists but continue to hold on to weight because their body is in fight or flight from an abusive relationship or past trauma. Do you see where he's going with this? We hammer and hammer and hammer the physical and it's important. But he said the critical piece is all of the health things we, we're going through may also, I'm not going to say may, I'm going to say they will have a mental and emotional deep soul component. So we've seen people Try every diet in the book, but the weight gain was coming from something else, from an abusive relationship or past, past trauma. I've seen patients try every conventional and natural, treat, natural treatment to quell their autoimmune condition, trying to force it into submission instead of taking a break from their hyper intense job or exercise routine. I have many patients who don't know which came first, the digestive problem or the depression, the autoimmunity or the anxiety, the migraines or the mood disorder. It's all <laughs> mixed together. You can't compartmentalize it. Okay, but then he shifts gears a little bit. And this is the last part I want to quote to you. He says, on the other end, I've seen patients quit a toxic, toxic job and completely reverse health conditions that had been getting worse for years. I've seen patients start, oh, excuse me, not medicating, meditating. I've, I've seen patients start meditating and investing in stress reduction and end up healing from chronic fatigue, hormone imbalances, inflammatory disorders, and so much more. I've seen patients start therapy and end up healing not from just anxiety and depression, but also from migraines, allergies, 
IBS, psoriasis, acne, the list goes on. Have you ever thought about your health problems um, or the issues you're trying to tackle in your health? Having a component that was driving them that is not physical, that can't be medicated, that comes from something buried deep or some type of coping mechanism, some type of, of thinking. He talks about, he goes into all kinds of different chronic, um, I can't remember what he calls them, guys, forgive me, um, issues like perfectionism or chronic stress or, um, I, I didn't look up that part of the book, but it, it, so many of these other things play a role. But all we're trying to do is diet and exercise and drink more water. All good, all good. But his point is that sometimes if you don't address the critical piece, you won't touch the health problem. It just won't budge. Um, this is the last part. He says, despite our best efforts to control certain aspects of our health by taking our supplements and medications and eating all the right things, if we don't address the emotional component of our health, we can never truly heal. heal. These are just a few of the many, many moments over the years that have made me a true believer in the bi-directional relationship between physical and emotional health. So here's where my mind's been spiraling a little bit because <laughs> um, my daughter's home. She moved home for a little while. She's 24. So did my other daughter. She's 23. Life is hard right now. They're, they're back home with me for a while. And we've been talking about some of this stuff. And my older daughter is um, struggling with adrenal fatigue. She's been through some tough trauma, um, really tough stuff the last couple of years and her body's shot. Um, and so we're addressing it on a lot of different levels. We've been having this conversation about not just eating better and not just getting more sleep, although that's critical, but to also processing a lot of the things going on in her head and letting her emotions come out and processing them and going through healing. She's doing some therapy, like handling it on all the different levels. But here's the thing she and I were talking about the other day. And this is why I want to swing into why the Lord plays such a role in this. Because when you are in a chronic state, whatever that looks like, the last thing you really want to do is the very things you need to do. I mean, the whole reason you're eating the junk food and binge watching and not getting the exercise and not in therapy and not, you know, whatever is because you are in that chronic state and all you want to do is lay on the couch and eat all the things and you don't have the energy because she, she's in a state of where her body is just shutting down. And it's the last time that, that you have the energy to go, Oh, I need to get more water and I need to drink, eat better. And she, you would just want to grab the chips right out of the, <laughs> out of the cupboard. It's, it's like a catch 22. His point is so critical. Like it, but it can be so overwhelming because then we're like, oh my gosh, I can't just eat better and I can't just try to sleep better. I'm supposed to work on my stuff and deal with my emotions and look at my unhealthy coping mechanisms. And it just, that can shut you down even more. He's right that it all contributes, but then you're just like, I, mm -mm, I give up. <laughs> it's too much. Which in my humble opinion is where the Lord comes in and why we so desperately need him when it comes to our health journey. You know, he says, um, I, we can do all things through him. We can all do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Even something overwhelming, like beginning to, to heal our health, no matter what that looks like and how we're going to do that. But he also says in John 15, for without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. And I think the reason is because it is this complicated. And sometimes there are things that are playing into this that that are go so deep that we don't even know where to begin, right? And we don't, and we're so such in a chronic state or we're in a an addicted state or whatever that looks like, we do not have the ability, the energy, the motivation. That's what my daughter said to me was that word. She's like, I just don't. I don't have the motivation. I know I'm supposed to do all that stuff, but I'm flatline, right? So how, are you, how am I supposed to get there? 
And, and yes, part of it is baby steps. And yes, absolutely, it's balance and not feeling like you have to do it all at once. And But that is what's so beautiful about our walk with the Lord. That's what's so amazing about his wisdom rather than our own. Because he knows what the path needs to look like. Do you do therapy first or do you focus on food first? Do you focus on more sleep first? Do you get into some classes or some courses? Do you... It's just like, I got to fix all the things that he is the one that is able to not only calm down that little spiraling mind, but to, to fill us with peace. My peace I give unto you. That was the world giveth, give I unto you. My peace. Even when you shouldn't be feeling it, let me fill you with peace. Let me calm that little head down. And then slowly, step by step, let me join with you in this path toward improving your health mentally, emotionally, physically, all of it. And what's even cooler is like it says in 2 Corinthians 12, his strength is made perfect in, weak, in weakness. In that very state of weakness, like my daughter said, when, when she was like, I, I don't even, I, that's zero motivation right now, mom, zero. And I get it. She's been through so much. Her body's just like done. Her body's done. So is her mind and emotions. She's just like, I started in COVID, spiraled after that, just a whole bunch of stuff that she's been through and it's kind of been relentless and, and she's just like flatline, like I said. And so when he says, my strength is made perfect in weakness, that's, do you see how alone? No, we're probably not going to get anywhere. We're probably going to keep binging, keep doing the things that are giving us the short term hit because our body, our brain, our emotions are crying out for relief and the food is the short term and the laziness. I'm not working out today. I'm staying in my bed. Well, and sleep's good too, but you know what I mean, right? But he is able, he is able to get us past that point where we are weak, but he's like, nope, you hold my hand. You hold my hand. I can give you peace. I can give you comfort from the struggle, but I can get you out of bed. I can give you the drive, the motivation, the strength, inner strength, to do some of these things that are going to heal your body, but also to begin going through some of the inner buried stuff that's contributing to all of it. I can show you which practitioner to use. I can show you which supplement may not work for you and which one will probably be a lifesaver. I can show you what foods are going to calm and heal your soul. I can show you what kind of exercise. Some of us need more gentle. If we're fried and your adrenals are fried, the last thing you need is some CrossFit class. It needs to be personalized and customized. And he is the ultimate health coach. I even, you know, working with me, I can, I can get you started on some things. Absolutely. I've seen some amazing changes, but it's because we bring the Lord into it and I, we have a coaching session and then, and then my clients go home and do some prayer and some work and try to get their own answers to, okay, what's the next step? And to get that strength flowing through the power of the spirit. Don't be overwhelmed by this. I promise this video is not meant to be overwhelming. It's meant to be not just encouraging, but what I wanted to do more than anything is create the vision and a hunger to have Christ as our partner. You can be healed. You can be set free. All kinds of food bondage, all kinds of disordered eating, all kinds of health issues. There is healing in him. He knows where the answer is, but we've got to grasp his and not just make him as a partner for what we think we need to do. We are turning this over and, and all of it and saying, okay, I'm going to think bigger. It's not just about a diet. I know that there's things in me, in me, my emotional, my mental health that are contributing to this. Like, like Dr. Cole said, that are the critical piece in healing. And the reason my body may still be continuing to spiral is because I've never, oh, my earring just fell out. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Whatever. I've never let myself look at those things. I've just shoved them down, shoved them down. He can give us the strength to do whatever it takes to be healed. If you want to read Dr. Cole's book, again, look. I, and guys, I'm only like, I'm only like a third of the way in. So I, I don't know. Maybe I should have waited until I finished it to give you a review. I, but everything he has online, I love too. So I knew, I knew I had to just get on, jump on here and talk about it. Um, but that link will be below. Be below. And, and then if you want to contact me, I can help you walk this journey also. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't be overwhelmed, please. It's possible. 
There is power in our weakness through him, strength through him. He is the healer. He is the deliverer and he can save us even in this. Thanks for joining me again. We'll see you next week.